Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video we will be solving a numerical related to a design of steel structures and basically the design of a roof truss. So we have a question over here find the wind pressure for the design of the roof truss of span 9.43 meter and height that is rise 1.46 meter. The height of the truss is 4.5 meter above the support. The building is situated in Bhaktapur and its permeability is less than 5%. The lifespan of the building is 50 years and lies in a flat terrain. So for solving this numerical, we need IS 875 part 3 1987. Let's understand this question in the figure. So the span of the truss is 9.43 meter and the height that is rise of the truss is 1.46 meter that is from the eave to the ridge. Similarly, the height of the truss is 4.5 meter above the support. So solution given span of the truss is 9.43 meter rise of the truss is 1.46 meter height of the structure is 4.5 meter assuming opening less than 5 percent as the question has suggested 5 percent if the question says that the permeability is normal then you can go for 20 percent that is 5 to 20 percent and similarly basic wind speed is 47 meter per second for Bhaktapur now the very first step is to calculate the design wind speed and this is from the IS code 875 you can find this in clause 5.3 vz that is the design wind speed k1 k2 k3 are the factors and v being the basic wind speed and these k factors depend upon various parameters firstly k1 so k1 is the risk coefficient that is it depends upon the uh, lifespan of the building and importance of the structure and similarly k2 is the terrain height or structure size factor and k3 is the topography factor so now let us see how these values are selected Firstly, let's start with K1 that is the risk coefficient and you can find this in the table 1 page 11. So here you can see all general buildings. So it's class of structures, all general buildings and structures mean probable dis, uh, design life of the structure in years. So the question has said 50 years. So we'll go for this and K1 factor for basic wind speed depends upon the basic wind speed and for 47 meter per second with mean life as 50 years k1 is to be taken as 1 now for k2 which is the terrain structure factor and this depends upon the terrain category as well as the structure or class of the structure we have four uh, terrain category terrain 1 terrain 2 terrain 3 and terrain 4 and similarly class a b c firstly starting with the terrain category 1 which is for the exposed open terrain that is there is no obstruction similarly terrain category 2 with open terrain with well scattered obstruction with uh, obstruction of 1.5 to 10 meter similarly category 3 terrain with numerously closed uh, spaced uh, closely spaced obstructions with building structures up to 10 meter in height and similarly category 4 terrain with numerous large high closely spaced obstruction and similarly for the class that depends upon the dimension of the building so if the structures or the component have a greatest of dimension either that is vertical or horizontal less than 20 meter then it is a class a similarly if the dimension lies between 20 to 50 meter then it is class b and similarly if it is greater than 50 meter then it is class c for now as this one is 9.43 and height is 4.5 meter and let us assume the uh, length of the building to be less than 20 meter so the class will be A and for Bhaktapur we can go for terrain category 3. The value of K2 that is from table 2 IS875 part 3 1987 page 12. Terrain category 3 class A and height of building is less than 10 meters so we can directly go for value K2 as 0.91. Similarly K3 which is the topography factor as the question has said it lies in the flat terrain so for K3 that is the topography you can find this in 5.3.3 if the wind slope is less than 3 degree the value can be taken as 1 and if the value of the upwind slope theta is greater than 3 degree the value of K3 is confined in the range of 1 to 1.36 if there is upwind slope theta greater than 3 degree outside the 5 kilometer uh, vicinity then it is not to be taken into action so we can just directly take k3 as 1 so finally design wind speed is equal to 1 into 0 0.91 into 1 into 47 so this comes as 42.77 meter per second now secondly we will compute the design wind pressure and this is from is 
875 part 3 1987 clause 5.4 in which it says the design wind pressure at any height above mean ground level shall be obtained by the following relationship between wind pressure and wind velocity that is pz is equal to 0.6 into vz square where vz is the design wind speed which we calculated previously so basically the coefficient 0.6 is in SI unit in the formula depends on number of factors and mainly on the atmospheric pressure and air temperature the value chosen corresponds to the average appropriate Indian atmospheric condition so that is why by squaring meter per second we are getting Newton per meter square so finally 0.6 into 42.77 meter per second square square we get 1098 Newton per meter square so we have computed the wind pressure now thirdly we'll calculate the wind load on the individual members that is you can find this in 6.2.1 that is clause and here we have f is equal to cpe minus cpi into a into p d cpe and cpi are the pressure coefficient a is the surface area of the structural element and pd being the design wind pressure so basically pressure coefficient is the ratio of difference between the pressure acting at a point on a surface and the static pressure of the incident wind to the design wind pressure where the static and design wind pressures are determined at the height of the point considered after taking into the account of geographical location terrain categories and the shielding effect we have two types of pressure coefficient that has to be evaluated firstly we have external pressure coefficient cpe and internal pressure coefficient external pressure coefficient depends upon two parameters that is building height ratio and the slope of the roof and internal pressure coefficient depends upon the permeability of the structure so let us start with the external pressure coefficient so you can find external pressure coefficient in 6.2.2 and it is computed different approach for walls and roof so for roof you can find it in clause 6.2.2.2 and the value can be computed from table 5 in table 5 you can see three different cases for s by w that is building height ratio one is less or equal to 1 by 2 another is s by w uh, greater than 1 by 2 and less than 3 by 2 and finally we have as building height ratio less than 6 but greater than 3 by 2 so firstly let us compute our case s by w so this is 4.5 by 9.43 basically height of the structure and width of the structure so this comes as 0.48 which is less than 1 by 2 that is 0.5 so we are in the first case similarly as i said it depends upon the roof angle as well so theta is equal to tan inverse 1.46 divided by 9.43 by 2 so it's simply perpendicular by base here you can see we are considering right angle triangle so what i've what i've done is just divided by 2 to get this distance and perpendicular we have as 1.46 so theta is equal to 17.21 degree now with this value we can compute the pressure coefficient and as we know the pressure effect is different on this point where it is incident and on the point rather than the incident point so for which we have to compute at two different phases considering two different angles so the adverse effect will be when wind pressure is applied directly on the roof so let us assume this as a plan of the roof which we are considering and assuming this as the direction of the wind so as i said the effect of the wind force will be adverse when it is acting directly without making any angle so if it is if it makes any angle then it will be resolved in two direction and the effect will be reduced but if it is applying directly on the surface then the effect will be adverse so we are just considering two angles that is 0 degree and 90 degree so that it will be applying directly on the roof so you can find in the code as well wind angle theta 0 degree and similarly wind angle theta 90 degree and simply the side on which the wind applies directly is the windward side and the side opposite to the windward is the leeward and that will be true for the this case as well so considering this as the windward and this as the leeward so first case theta is equal to 0 degree so theta is equal to 0 degree that means the wind is applied directly so theta is equal to 0 means we are taking this to this direction and making direct impact on the roof so that means it is perpendicular to reach so we are just assuming or 
line so that a reference can be made. So wind normal to reach theta is equal to zero degree. Now from code you can find. So this is our case and our angle is 17.21 degree that lies between 10 to 20. So the value of EF, GH, EG, FH. So the naming is done as EF, GH. Now for 10 to 20, the value for EF is minus 1.2 and minus 0.4. Similarly for GS the value is minus 0.4 for both cases 10 and 20. So we can just compute the value of CPE that is pressure coefficient external pressure coefficient considering 17.21 degree from simple interpolation between these two value from this formula we can compute this value. So for 17.21 degree the value of EF that is pressure coefficient in EF direction is minus 0.624. And for EGS, it will be minus 0.4. So we have computed external pressure coefficient. Now what is internal pressure coefficient then? So you can find internal pressure coefficient in clause 6.2.3. If permeability is less than 5%, then we will consider CPI as plus minus 0.2. If it is greater than 5% and lies between 20%, then CPI is taken as plus minus 0.5. And if it is greater than 20%, CPI is taken as plus minus 0.7 so the basic reason for assuming plus or minus value for internal pressure coefficient is that the internal air pressure may be positive or negative depending upon the direction of flow of air in relation to the opening of the building so for less than 5% opening we'll take CPI as plus minus 0.2 and for windward as we have already discussed about this formula so design wind pressure is equal to F is equal to CPE plus minus CPI into a into PD. So now let us substitute the value. CP is minus 0 0.624 plus minus 0 0.2 into 1098. So design wind pressure is 1098. We get the value as for positive plus 0 0.2 we get minus 464 Newton per mm meter square and minus 903.4 Newton per meter square for negative pressure coefficient. In tabular form if we see so windward pressure substituting the value minus 464.91 903.94 newton per meter square similarly leeward pressure it was 0 0.4 for both case cpi is plus minus 0 0.2 so we get minus 219 newton per m meter square and minus 658 newton per meter square for the leeward side so the second case is wind angle theta is equal to 90 degree so when this angle makes 90 degree So it will be parallel to ridge. Wind parallel to ridge theta is equal to 90 degree. So from table you can find the value for EG FH. And if it is acting in this direction that is ridge then it will act on EG and FH. So for 10 to 20 it is minus 0 0.8 and minus 0 0.7. Similarly for FH it is minus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6. And one thing you should notice that the value of the pressure coefficient either it is windward pressure or leeward pressure they are generally negative that is due to the reason the flow of the air from inward to outward so that is why the value are negative in some cases the value is also positive and this may come when the slope of the roof are larger and with greater openings now if we interpolate the value of pressure coefficient for theta is equal to 17.21 degree we get minus 0.73 and this will be a single uh, value that is minus 0.6 similarly pressure coefficient internal pressure coefficient will be plus minus 0.2 considering opening less than 5 percent similarly we can compute the windward pressure and leeward pressure considering this pressure coefficient so minus 0.73 plus 0.2 into 1098 we get minus 579 0.4 Newton per meter square and all of this value can be computed considering either sign for the individual cases. So all of these value are negative that means the direction is upward. So the pressure is flowing from inward to outward hence we are seeing negative value and negative value indicates uplift pressure. So we have to consider maximum of this value and design the truss. So considering maximum value that is 
absolute maximum value maximum uplift pressure will be minus 1018.4 newton per meter square and if it was a positive value then it will be a downward pressure so maximum downward pressure would be something value some value that we have computed so we have to consider both values that is uplift pressure as well as the downward pressure i hope this video helped and if it did help do like and subscribe and share with your friends thank you